Hey guys, uh, I have a story to share with you. Um, since 2013, I've seen three close encounters. I've had three close encounters. And uh, my grandfather, Paul Amaral, he believed in uh, UFOs. Um, when I had my first experience in 2013, that confirmed to me that this phenomenon is real, meaning there is no big secret anymore for me. It's not a, it's not a mystery. Um, there's something going on. I'm not going to say it's ne necessarily extraterrestrials or even ET, but I want to believe that it is. I have seen three distinct different events though. One of them was out on extraterrestrial highway out in Nevada. I've actually got footage of those th those objects on YouTube. We did happen to capture video of the event, but it didn't do justice to what we had seen. Uh, the second event happened out in Dulce, New Mexico, on the way on my way to Indian Market with my brother. 2014. It happened right outside of Dulce, where we were camping. Third event happened outside of Marfa, Texas. I saw the Marfa lights out in West Texas. Now, the story that I want to share with you guys today is my experience in Dulce. And I've never made a video of this. I've talked about it to people in person, but uh, these events led me to do the UFO Fest. It's what inspired me to start digging into this phenomenon and start researching it. So um, I know that what I saw out in Nevada was not orange orbs, I mean, was not flares. That's what I meant to say. They maneuvered. And uh, military flares do not maneuver they don't go behind a mountain and down into a valley they don't disappear and reappear that was my first event the second event that i saw that i witnessed out in dulce um was a triangular shaped ufo and we had a load of rock on a trailer i was we were driving an f-250 pickup truck my brother came with me on that trip we were going to go sell carving alabaster at an Indian market out in Santa Fe. It was August of 2014. And during that month in New Mexico, it was absolutely cloudy almost every day except for the two days that Indian market was going. Indian market is an incredible event. It's like Santa Fe's largest art market. Um, it only happens once a year. And there's like over 1,100 Native American artists from all over North America and Canada and maybe even Mexico that come to that event every year. So we were on our way to New Mexico with a load of rock carving alabaster for stone carvers around the American Southwest who uh, are exhibiting at the show. So that's why we were heading to New Mexico. But we set up a tent about 40 miles, 30 or 40 miles um, on the, the west side of Dulce, New Mexico as we were going up into a canyon there. I forgot which highway it is, but it's coming in from Farmington. And uh, we pitched a tent there, and we kind of jackknifed the truck around the tent to kind of keep it keep keep it protected from traffic off the side of the highway or anyone who might come off the highway onto the dirt road there because we felt a little vulnerable. So we set the tent up, and there was these trees behind us, these juniper trees or pinion trees, and. Um, and we went to bed. But we had the rain fly on this big tent that we set up and it was drizzling all night. It was it was basically raining. So we went to bed. My brother was exhausted and uh, he fell asleep before I did. I fell asleep and about one or two o'clock in the morning I heard what sounded like fireworks or some sort of swishing sound up in the sky and as I woke up I could see some kind of light play above the tent, but it was diffused because of the rain fly. So I didn't know what was, it's like 
a couple lights were chasing each other out in the sky or something. So as this was waking me up and I woke up, that stopped. And I was trying to figure out what it was as soon as I was alert, what was what was playing what was flying around in the sky. And uh, as I was alert, looking for something, that's when out the corner of my eye, out in the back of the tent, I could see what looked like three slow moving lights that were kind of like rotating around each other like this. And I couldn't see it because it was because the rain fly was blocking my field of vision. So, um, but it came around the side of the tent and it was rotating kind of like this. And at first I thought it was three distinct lights or objects. I, I couldn't tell for sure. But what happened next is this, this craft came into full view of my tent screen where, you know, where the entrance is and the tent, uh, zips down it was kind of like a triangular type family tent it was a big tent but as this object came into view between the rain fly and the screen i could see it and it was right directly in front of me and this object was a triangular shaped object a very massive one i might say i i don't know the disc i don't know the size of it um but in each corner of this triangle was a deeply embedded muffled white light. It wasn't very bright, um, but it seemed like it was deeply embedded inside the object. It was pitch black silhouetted against the sky. Now I remember the moon being out that night and illuminating the clouds and that's why I was able to tell the shape of the craft being pitch black. It was like silhouetted against the clouds. So it rotated on its side like this right in front of the tent, probably moving about that slow, I remember, if I remember right. And what happened is this object came flat. It just flattened out like this, and it was kind of thin. It wasn't very, it had no um, top to it. It was just a very stick thin object, but it kind of just rotated there for about 20 or 30 seconds. And as I was watching it, it seemed to be a while. And then what happened is it just slowly ascended through the clouds and the clouds just kind of like closed underneath the craft as it went through the clouds. So um, I had that experience on my way to Indian Market. And uh, this past May, um, I got to network with the Hickory Apaches there in Dulce. They put on the Dulce Base UFO Conference um, because there's legends and stories about an underground military installation that's uh, underneath Archuleta Mesa that, you know, is kind of split between the Ute Reservation to, on Ar above Archuleta Mesa and the Hickory Apache Reservation. And um, I got to go to the conference there and I did their photography for them. And it was a lot of fun. I met folks like uh, researchers like Anthony Sanchez and Linda Moulton Howe and got to hear a lot of stories. I talked to a lot of the locals around Dulce who have a lot of stories to share and a lot of experiences to share about that base and they were telling me that there is stuff going on there and I've had a few individuals from the Dulce community they told me that um, family members and friends have died mysteriously as a result of this um, this underground base. Uh, I believe it's there and I saw this triangular shaped object and I tried to wake my brother up. I tried to wake my brother up and he wouldn't wake up so he didn't see what I saw. And so you guys only have my word to go on and I don't expect people to believe me but um, I know what I saw, and I'm not one of those people that uh, has to wonder anymore because I have had these experiences. Um, and just like the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the main guy in the movie that Richard Dreyfus plays, he gets pretty obsessed with the phenomenon, and I guess I have fallen victim to that. And it's these events that sort of turn me into. A UFO researcher over the last few years. Um, when I was out there at the Dulce Base conference, 
some of the members of the community there wanted, they thought it would be fun to go see the spot where I was, me and my brother were camped that night. And uh, we tried to figure out what the size of the object might be. We did find the location and I had to go on memory. It was kind of hard to locate at first, but we were able to find it. And um, we guesstimated that the craft had to be about 100 feet to 150 feet from corner to corner based on the size of the trees and the size of the canyon and just kind of trying to do some of the math. I'm not very good with math, but these guys were pretty good at figuring out how big this object could have been. So um, one of the members of our party that came with us on that specific trip said that they had, they had an experience where they saw an unidentified flying object, a light on the highway several decades before that on the same highway that kind of followed them I believe is what they were telling me about. I can't remember the details of that story. I'll have to figure it out later on if I go out to Dulce again. But um, anyways, uh, my brother does remember me trying to wake him up that night, letting him know that I saw. That's the only way I have an alibi or a second primary witness to that event is my brother did uh, acknowledge the fact that I tried to wake him up because I was I was seeing this stuff going on and he was just too tired to get up. So he had been working all day and he was completely exhausted. I didn't do any of the rock work that he had to do because I have a bad back because I got in an accident in 2014 where my photography buddy hit a cow out on open range, out on an extraterrestrial highway out in Nevada near Rachel, near Area 51. So he hit a cow at about 75 miles an hour and it completely totaled, totaled his car and that ended up injuring my lower back. So I haven't been able to do heavy manual labor on my lower back because of that. But anyways... This story and these two others are the reason why I'm researching this phenomenon now and the reason why we're putting on a festival every year. So that's the first time I've shared that story and I will share some more with you guys um, as we move forward. So click like and subscribe to Talking Tree here if you'd like to hear some more stories. Leave some comments. I'm not getting a whole lot of exposure here on YouTube, but I'm trying to uh, get involved more with the channel here and getting stuff uploaded and updated. So have a good day.